change information, um, basically make sure that it's the most current information because there are five pillars to um, the business for the Posh Girls Club. Our success framework has five pillars and under each one of those are specific categories. And so I go through each of the, each one of our challenges fills a category. So I'm not sure if you guys realize that, but that's how they're set up. So each of the challenges fill a category and I constantly go back through those five pillars so that I can make sure that new people that are coming in are understanding where we are in our framework and how it works into your business. And also to make sure, because as you start working, the ladies who have been here for a while, as you start working on your businesses, you know, you get sucked into one area sometimes and you're working on that area and then it's like, oh yeah, I forgot there's these other four areas that I also need to be working in. And so I like to just consistently go back around and go back through to make sure that you're staying on track with within those pillars, okay? So today, the challenge went out for day one, and this is gonna kind of encompass day one and day two. So today we're actually gonna validate your products. So a lot of people um, that I come in contact with, that I coach, that I deal with on a day-to-day -day, um, sell products and services, and they're not really sure how to actually sell that product or service to people. I hear it all the time, okay? And it's because it, everyone does it on some level, unless you've had some sort of training where you've been taught um, not to think in that way. People do it, it's, it's natural, it happens. <laughs> um, but I wanna make sure that you are really thinking customer-centered and not business centered alone because that's how you're gonna sell your products. All right, so usually you're thinking I've got this great product or I have this amazing service and of course people are gonna want it, duh, right? But people from the outside looking in, if you really think about it, they're thinking, well, how does your product benefit me? So yeah, you've got a cute t-shirt with your cute little blinged out logo on it, but how does that benefit me? What does that do for my life? So the business isn't thinking about how the product benefits the customer and adds value to the customer's life. They're thinking, I wanna sell my cute t-shirts or I wanna sell my cute wraps or I wanna sell my services as a coach because I know all of these things and you should know what I know. Right? And I want to help all of these people, but how do they know how you help them? Well, let's validate it. Let's look at a product. Um, I know a lot of the girls sell t-shirts, and so that was just a really easy, and, and most people, uh, most of you at some point will probably get into selling your own branded products to go along with the services that you offer if you don't currently have a physical product. So I thought it'd be something that could be pretty general that would help a lot of people. And just think about how these specific um, guidelines work inside of your business, okay? All right, so the first thing you have to do is you have to ask yourself, um, why does this person want, for example, my t-shirt? Why does this person, as I wear Tori's t-shirt today, <laughs> Why does this person want my tea? Why do they want it? Um, does it have value for that person as an individual somehow? Does it represent something to that person? Does it speak to that person from where it came from, from what it represents as far as what's on it? What is, especially like for brands that are your logo, right? Or you're, you're selling your logo. Why does a person want a t-shirt that has your logo on it, okay? Does your logo have some significant meaning to them? Because designers, designers have designer brands because they built a brand and you can walk around with Gucci, maybe not Gucci anymore, but Louis Vuitton or Versace and that represents something. 
it's more than just the name on the shirt. It is the name on the shirt that's bigger than the shirt. Okay, but how did they get to that point? What do you need to do with your shirt or your logo t-shirt to make it resonate with the person who wants it? All right, let's look at the product. Um, let's say you've got a t-shirt or a product that's your logo, a jumpsuit, um, uh, two-piece, that's, that's your logo. What does the customer need to feel connected to that product? I was thinking, as I was just writing some notes earlier, I was thinking about um, Juicy Couture. Juicy was one that was really big for me and my life and my journey, right? And so I thought, I'll use this as an example. <laughs> I would buy Juicy Couture by the trunk loads, seriously. These stupid $250 to $300 jumpsuits, um, two-piece, you know, sweat outfit, right? Anybody else get on the Juicy Couture train? Oh my God, I just think about all the money I wasted on Juicy Couture. But I was cute though, okay? <laughs> I've got like loads of it in my closet still that I'm just never wearing anymore because, you know, it's that moment has passed, right? Um, but what they did, when you think back to it, they equated it. Um, they connected them to some, some faces and that connected to an emotion. So think Eva Longoria and Paris Hilton, two completely demographics, right? But they wore them. So in, in anyone who was on television at that time were people that you resonated with in some way or another. Those people made you want the product and then they multiplied that by millions of women. So essentially they created an idea, an, an ideal audience from um, the people that they sent their products to. Now, it's changed so much. The industry has changed because now influencers are everyday people, right? So having your product in the hand of the right person who looks like your audience, who looks like what you want to multiply your audience is, is game changing. Okay, I use celebs because it gives you a whole pool of people in that audience to look at who would want um, the product that you have because you have that person in mind for your brand. Does that make sense? So when you think about the pain points of that person going a little bit deeper, okay, it may not be some huge and obvious issue. So one of the things that was in the challenge um, today were the pain points. So you're going to want to look at the pain points of that ideal customer. That doesn't have to actually be pain or something. It's something that they're lacking. Something because something that you don't have feels painful if it's something that you want, right? When you want something and you can't get your hands on it or you don't know where to find it, that's painful. Okay? So you're thinking about what they want in their life that they don't have, that your product fills. No matter what your product is, that is a standard. Whatever it is, you're thinking about how your product is gonna fill a void for someone because they don't have it. And that's why they're seeking you out. Okay, Juicy Couture was loungewear, cute, high-end, is starting to create a picture of what that person looks like. So that could be on two different things for the stay-at-home mommy for the, or for the socialite, girl on the move, young, single, right? Um, they were super cute and comfy. They sold them in sacks because of the audience, the audience that they targeted. So who is your customer and what do they struggle with? Drop some notes if you know really clearly who that is, who they are and what they struggle with. I don't mean um, just those demographics. I mean, let's dig deep into what your product is, who needs it, what they're lacking in their life or perceived lack, and how you fulfill that. Because that is how you sell products. Okay, that's where that emotional connection comes in because you're harping on that. You're focused on that. You're focused on what the lack is, 
or what the thing that they want more of, that's how you sell your products on an emotional bonded um, uh, level, okay? So for me, my struggle, I didn't wanna wear yoga pants everywhere, okay? Or like the black leggings and gym clothes all the time because that's when I was like a total gym rat, okay? I didn't wanna wear yoga pants everywhere, okay? Um, I love to be cute and dressed up, but I love to be lounged and comfortable. Those were pain points. Finding cute stuff that like athleisure is like a thing now. It wasn't then. <laughs> it was like t-shirt and sweatpants or, or gym pants, right? And then here came Jussie Couture, okay? <laughs> so, and then um, I still you wanted to be cute and sexy and any size. And they went from size of zero to like two or three XL or something like that. Okay. So for me, as their target audience, it was designer. And so I also felt very fancy, honey, because she loves her fancy stuff. Okay. <laughs> so I felt fancy. I was their target audience. They targeted Paris Hilton and even Longoria. Fancy housewife, fancy socialite. All right. It was not enough to wear the, the two-piece uh, lounge clothes if it didn't have a J on it. I went, wasn't even looking at it, okay? <laughs> Target audience. The suits had different colors and different options, um, and you felt good wearing them. Points, points, points. You could go from one place to the next wearing them as a busy mommy or a socialite. I considered myself both of them out with, you know, from the car wash to, from the gym to the coffee shop to the car wash to lunch with my girls. My, I could legit do that in Juicy Couture all day if I wanted to. So it solved the problem for me of comfort, looking frumpy or like dowdy. That's just not who I am. That's a pain point. Okay, shallow, maybe, but it's a pain point for the right audience. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. So um, the struggle, which is another part, it's part three, I believe, the third of them, the struggle that your person deals with is more than just cute clothes. It wasn't just cute clothes. Okay. <laughs> it was, wait, I see a, a comment. Let's see. <laughs> yes. So getting there and targeting. Okay, good. Diverse woman who likes Awesome. These are good. So we've got, I think I'm coming close to figuring it out. Good. Um, don't know who exactly who needs it. Um, okay, so we'll, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into that. I'm getting there. I'm targeting the regular woman who likes comfort. Yeah, had a diverse taste. Tomboy chic. Good. For my classes, the person getting out of beauty school and juicy couture cuteness. Yes, honey, all day. Yay. <laughs> yes. This is how you dig a little bit deeper into that customer in the psyche. So yeah, we started really surface, right? Um, but the struggle was more than just cute clothes because let's just dig a little deeper into what that looks like. Um, Self-esteem, self-value, self-worth. I was married at the time. So I was someone who didn't like, I always wanted to be cute all the time it was overkill, but that's just me, you know, that was my personality. <laughs> and um, always feeling good about, and because I was dealing with other issues that were even deeper than that, you know, I wanted to be cute, even if I was just at home, I wanted to be at home cute and then I could just jump up and go. So it actually went deeper than that. It was self-esteem, it was feeling good about myself in a situation where I didn't really feel so good about myself. Okay, I was a new mommy and that feeling getting up and having a, a little routine of making myself putting on my cute stuff and get it doing my hair or nails or whatever it was I was doing. That was important for me as a new mommy, you know, um, I've changed. I don't look the same. I, I've now got this person chewing on me all the time. <laughs> so um, it went into my value system of making me have a process that made me feel better, okay? That's a pain point that someone has when it comes to the clothing that they choose to buy, when it comes to um, where they buy their clothing. That's a pain point for people. I think about Fashion Nova all the time. I used to talk about them a lot um, last year 
or maybe when I first started, maybe like two years ago, Fashion Nova did this and they completely hit the nail on the head with Fashion Nova Curve. First of all, they did it once with Fashion Nova and then they did it again with Fashion Nova Curve. And what they did was use regular women, every single day women in their campaigns, right? They hit it on the head, um, juicy curves and all on their feed. Their whole feed was filled with regular women, right? This is rarely done and it's rarely done really well. They made their audience the stars, y'all. Seriously, they made their audience the stars. So when you're building a brand like theirs, who doesn't want to be seen in their cute clothes as an influencer? They targeted influencers, everyday people, everyday women who were buying their clothes and then giving them a platform to show themselves. Okay? So when you're building a brand like this, like I said, who doesn't want to be seen on an influencer platform? Posting on a page with millions of followers. Hello? Especially when you're in the beauty industry and you're a fashionista and that's your thing. You're all about that. So to validate your product, your tees or your branded items or, or whatever clothing that you can get people um, to mention and want to talk about, you must think about the person that you want to buy it. The person that your client will want to see wearing it. And then how those mix together, okay? So I'll see like stories all the time, right? Of um, like your Instagram stories, people posting their items and the stories with a picture of the item. And I might be like, that's really cute. That's a cute item. Right? But it doesn't go any further than that. There's nothing that takes me any further than, oh, that's cute. Next. Nothing that takes me further um, than just seeing it and acknowledging that it's cute. So if you're doing that with your stories, like you, it's almost like you're missing the connector. And they become just an, a work of um, a task, just another task it actually needs to create a whole purpose, a whole story. That's why they're called stories. <laughs> but it seriously does, it needs to create a whole story. The best marketing strategies relate back to the way that people wanna feel and how your product makes them feel that. Makes sense? Make sure that makes sense to everybody. And you, you can drop your questions if you've got any, okay? Um, Fashion Nova got this because, like I said, they use the everyday girl for their models, right? They use the everyday girl. They know how they want it to feel. So if, if she wants to feel that way, the girl that's buying it and posting her picture up, guess who else wants to feel that way? Her audience wants to feel that way. The customer, the business's audience who's coming, Fashion Nova's audience more of those girls, it multiplies and multiplies and multiplies. Cause they're like, oh, she looks cute in that. I bet I could look cute in that too. Multiply. I hope that's resonating and that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> um, Juicy Couture got this because they targeted stay at home mom and also those wannabe socialites, right? So again, how can you validate your product? Think about, um, what your audience looks like. What does your current audience look like? For whatever the product is you sell, whatever industry you're in, what does your current audience look like? Who's engaging? Beyond, you know, our, our crews. <laughs> Who's engaging with your product? Then look at your product and see how it can enhance the life or the being or the or of that person who you, who's in your audience that you imagine using it, wearing it, buying it. How does your product enhance it? Even if it's a branded product with your name on it, how does it enhance their lives? How does it make their lives better? How can you connect them to the story of that product? What will they get and think about when they see it, when they touch it, when they use it, when they experience it? 
write this out from the customer's perspective, how they will feel when they get your product. Write it out. Um, you have a lot of prompts in there today. Like I said, if you've done this challenge before, it's not the same. Okay, I've done a lot of editing in it. So I really want you to go through and write out the prompts because those become your sales copy. Okay, what, from the customer's perspective, um, how will they feel when they get your product? And what is it going to add to their lives? Same thing if you, um, if you write books. Um, I was thinking about other people in our community. So if you write books, when you wanna get people to come to you for help with writing books, or you wanna encourage people to get them started writing books, right? What do they get from writing books? We know what you get. You get them coming to buy your service of teaching them or helping them create their book. What do they get? They tell their story. They help others who have had those experiences um, avoid them um, or deal with them or, or keep people from getting into them altogether. Right? We tell our stories to help people in some way or another. So you need to get to that person by talking to them about how their product, how your product, and them writing it, them sharing their story is going to help other people. And then all of a sudden, they want to share their story, right? Um, the consequences, which is the, another part of, of this whole product, the consequences would refer to um, what the person would feel if they never get to what you're offering. If they never try your product, what do they miss out on? They might miss out on something very exclusive that comes from another country that you can't get any other way. And if you do, it might be way overpriced. The fashion over customer um, might never be really comfortable with themselves, but because they found, um, because they never found some place that made clothes that made them feel sexy and cute and were like dirt cheap. <laughs> and they could just buy tons and tons of them because they're so affordable. That's something they might miss out on. Um, that feeling of looking sexy in any size, and feeling sexy in any size, feeling comfortable in your own skin, because yeah, we're gonna make stuff that fits you because everyone's not one size. The juicy customer might just be another, you know, stay at home mommy who is a fancy. I don't know, for me, that was big. I, I just can't do it. <laughs> I don't wanna be frumpy, God. <laughs> I still go get juicy, okay? But seriously, I want you to think about it from the perspective of what is the customer gonna um, miss out on if they don't come and experience what you are offering them. So, <laughs> excuse me, now you can go down this list and create, um, go down the, what you've written out, create a list of the things that you actually do to enhance the life that your product brings into their lives if, as, of that potential customer, okay? <laughs> what does your product bring to their life? Um, this becomes your lead page. All of these things, that's why it's so purposeful. And this is such an important part of your business because this becomes the lead page. This becomes the pain points, the problems, the consequences, the solutions, and the transformations. You guys see how it all comes together? So when I see a lead page, when I go through the socialite and I see a lead page that doesn't include all of those things, I'm wondering why. Because this challenge challenges you to create them. And it's not just um, busy work. This is the foundation of what your customer base looks like and what your customer experiences as she comes into your product. Okay, so you create a list of the things that you do or your service does to enhance the life of your customer. You make that lead page, you go down the list of what they're telling themselves in their head. What's your customer telling yourself in her head? The person who wants Fashion Nova might be telling herself, there are no cute clothes for me, 
um, that make me feel cute, sexy, attractive because I'm not a certain size. There's nothing for me. I'm just gonna wear this big old t-shirt every day. Nobody has the products that um, are meant for curvy girls. They don't exist. There's no one who thinks that I'm cute or attractive um, because I'm a thicker girl. Lies. Fashion Nova tells you that's a lie, right? So finally, your solution, um, you're gonna create the lead page, like I said, that totally counters all of those negative things or all of those issues that the person is facing. Your solution is your branded um, tea or clothing that does what? How does it transform them? Your class or ebook that does what? Your accessory takes them from here to there, how? Your course or your seminar or event does what for this person? That's what, where you need to show them in the end, the transformation of from the issue, this is the problem that I know you're having, whatever it is, whether it be surface or whether it be internal, this is how um, you can feel, this is how I solve that problem for you. And that is how you validate the product that you sell. So before you get into email lists, before you get into uh, tagging people and all of these tools and, and things that there are in your business to create and all the systems, I can teach you systems all day. But if you don't even know how to validate your product, which I'm not seeing a lot of right now, I want to see how you validate your product from each one of these steps. And I'd love if you're in the challenge, um, post it either in the socialites, post it on our Facebook page, um, Posh Girls Club on Facebook. I want to know how you are validating your product because without the validation for yourself and for your customer, none of those other things are gonna matter because the customer isn't gonna go any further with you because you there's no validation. So now you can clearly Tell the person why you are the one for them. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to convince anyone. You will never have to convince a person to buy your product if you can validate it, which you can. <laughs> you can validate it by going through the steps because that person is going to come completely resonate with you based on the way you laid it out in that lead page. And then that's where the magic happens. And then you will multiply that with every single person that comes into your business without you being there. Got it? Now, do we have any questions? You guys have any questions on any of those? Tori is the truth. <laughs> I need to hear all this again, pow, pow. <laughs> Validation is needed for this. Yes, it is. <laughs> so Tori, is this similar to the branding workbook in the socialize? I just put it out and started it last week and it sounds similar. So there are gonna be certain parts of the branding because brand building starts with understanding who your customer is. Um, and like I said, I'm always changing the content and updating the content because I want it to stay new and fresh. I want you to really understand what you're doing and i also base the content on what i see the questions that i see coming in um especially if i'm starting to get a lot of the same questions then i know we need to go back and really review some of these things <laughs> validation is needed yes <laughs> all right <laughs> Get again, I'll pick with your t-shirt. All right, so I think that answers all the questions. That was genius. Thank you, Thank you. All right, so most of us, I think I have different audiences. For now, I'll say naturally stas. I like that. Who have a passion for their hair and want to celebrate different aspects of natural hair and beauty. Excellent. So you know what they want. Now, you gotta back that up, rewind to the pain point. What even got them there? What were they struggling with? K 
Okay, that's how you get their attention. So they know, oh, she's talking to me. Okay, that's how they know you're talking to them. A Luan young black woman who likes to be well dressed while connecting to her African heritage. Awesome. So you know who she is. What does she struggle with? Does she struggle with finding those things? Does she struggle with the authenticity? Does she struggle with finding them in abundance? You see? So go back to what she struggles with before she becomes that woman that you know you take her into. You, that's the solution that you deliver, Aluma. So you deliver that solution, but what's her pain points? That's what so many people are missing in their stories. You guys notice when I it, go through my stories, when I put them up and I um, talk about things, I talk like today, I talked about people who um, have these products and they want to sell their products, but they haven't thought about what their customer is looking to see. Pain point, I want to make sure that every time I do those little lives that I tell you what your struggle is. If your struggle is you have a product, you think your product's great, amazing, wonderful. But what does your customer think? How does your customer even know that you're for them? That was a pain point that I drew on. And somebody saw that story and they said, oh, that's me. Let me sign up for the text club. Let me get in there so I can watch that video. Or they'll do that throughout the day and they'll be able to watch the replay, okay? They'll be able to catch the replay for 24 hours because they're gonna see, oh, that was me. All right, female wants to achieve a goal, but is frustrated by the blocks in their lives and need coaching to reach their goal, overwhelmed with life balancing. There we go, there's her pain point, she got it. Um, frustrated by blocks in their lives and need coaching to reach their goal. What blocks? Overwhelmed with life and balancing their successes. What overwhelm? Deeper, okay, but you got it. You got the fact that there's pain points there. There's issues. Okay. All right. So let's see. You're welcome. Okay. So we got another. Um, I would like to offer a freebie, challenge, etc. That relates to the specific t-shirt design. Would this be validation? Yes. But how are you gonna? So how you relate it is important. So even on the Valentine's Day um, live that I or post that I sent in my story, I didn't even realize that these things were gonna connect, but. I was talking about single mommies and, and you know, people just uh, connecting to relationships, connecting to yourself, wishing happy mothers, happy Valentine's Day to single mommies and stuff, because that's, that's what I am. And um, at the end, there was a product attached to it. There was a product. The product was the one, a bag that I am an influencer for. I'm a brand ambassador for. Girl Squad. So the product connected directly to that thing. There's usually my challenges, they all relate to a product in one of the pillars of the brand, or it goes to all of the pillars, which then connects to the social life. So it could be branding, then you might be in the 30 days of branding. It could be content, you might be in a content um, building challenge. Okay, monetize would be this challenge. And if we're doing all of them, then I'm going to send you to the socialite where you're going to find tons of other resources. These are just the free ones. This isn't even good stuff yet. God. <laughs> Overcoming any area of pain with power. Is that a pain point? So you have to, what area? Who are you talking to? It is a pain point, but you're not specific enough. Do you guys see that? So you got to get specific about who the person is, what type of pain. And you may not talk to everyone all the time at the same time, okay? You may be talking to people, different people at different times. Just like I gave the example of, you know, fashion, clothing. We also have coaches. So I'm able to answer some questions about coaching, but I used fashion brands as an example. But you can see how you can even take a fashion brand and connect it to pain point. Because every business and every customer has them. Otherwise, we wouldn't be out looking for this stuff. Okay. All right. So that's it for today. Thank you guys for coming in. Um, if you have any other questions, you can definitely drop them on Facebook page. If you're not in the socialite, 
We are a socialite. Drop them there and I will pop in as I can and answer your question. Okay. Thank you for coming in. It's always my goal to give you value because I want to see you win, honey. Okay. <laughs> All right, babes, you all have an amazing day and I'll be back later on in the challenge to um, check in with you and make sure you're um, dropping any questions that you might have throughout the challenge, even if you're DMing me or just shooting your reply and then I'll do it as a live, okay? Bye, babes. Keep going.